Hi, for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to look at solving an inequality. Um, with this one, we do end up with a negative coefficient in front of our variable x. And it is very important that you understand what to do in that situation. Starting out, you don't know that it's going to have a negative coefficient, but I did make sure that I picked one that has a negative um, coefficient. So with this, where we're going to start is we're going to start by distributing the negative 3 into our parentheses. And so I would do negative 3 times 2, which gives me negative 6, and negative 3 times negative 2, which again gives me negative 6. Minus 5x is less than or equal to 82. Our right-hand side is already simplified, so we don't have to do anything to that side. For our next step, what we are going to do is we are going to combine like terms. Since both of these are like terms, they both have x's, we're going to add the numbers in front. So I'm going to keep the negative 6 because it doesn't have anything else that I can combine it with on the left-hand side. And then what we're going to do is because we have negative 6 and negative 5, anytime the sign is the same, think sum, and you're going to add those together. So 6 plus 5 gives me 11. And then I would keep the sign because it's both of them are negative. So we end up with negative 6 minus 11x is less than or equal to 82. We still don't have x completely by itself. Remember, that's our goal. So what we're going to do is we're going to add 6 to both sides. So with this, we end up with negative 11x is less than or equal to 88. And when we get to this point, remember, when we divide by a negative, we have to switch the sign. So when I switch the sign, this becomes x is greater than or equal to negative 8. And the reason why we do that, the reason why we change the sign is, let's just say that we started with an expression that we know is to be true. So we know that 5 is less than 7. If I add the same number to both sides, so if I add 2 to both sides, I still have a true statement. 5 plus 2 gives me 7, and 7 is less than 9. If I were to subtract the same value from both sides, I still end up with a true statement because 2 is less than 4. However, when I multiply both sides by a negative, so the reason that we switch our sign is because when I multiply by a negative, let's say that we multiplied by negative 2, and I did 7 times negative 2 also. Well, negative 10 and negative 14, I can no longer keep the sign the same way because negative 10 has switched the side that it's on of the negative 14. So because the sign switches, when I multiply or divide both sides by a negative, we have to remember to switch this sign right here. So I know that this has nothing to do with the problem at hand, but I want to make sure that you understand why you go through and you um, you switch the sign. Because if you understand why you're doing something, it makes it a lot easier to remember it. A lot of times, I don't think that students fully understand what is going on, and so they make mistakes because of that. So I always like to try to show that. Um, so with this, remember that x is greater than or equal to negative 8. If you do have to graph the solution, you can just draw a number line. Um, a lot of times it's provided for you. Um, negative 8 is to the left of 0, so we would just put it down here. Because it includes it, we would fill it in, so we would say that negative 8. And it's everything to the right of there, because remember, as long as your variable is first, the arrowhead points the direction. If your variable is on the opposite side, you do have to go the opposite way, um, because it's best to write it with your variable first. So with this, when we're checking to make sure our solution makes sense, what we are going to do is we are going to pick any value that's in our solution set. So I'm going to use x equals 0 because that's always the easiest one to plug in. No matter how complicated your equation is, if I plug in 0, it makes it easy. So I really have negative 3 times 2 plus 0, which is really just negative 3 times 2, minus 5 times 0, which is really just 0, and we're going to see, is this less than 82? And we can see, obviously, that negative 6 minus 0 is definitely less than or equal to 82. So any value to the right of negative 8, if I plug in negative 8, that would give me 82. Um, and it does include it because it's equal to. So you can always just check by plugging in a value. 
Again, for these, depending upon the course that you're in, there are different ways of writing the answer. In some courses, it's perfectly acceptable just to leave it like this. Um, other courses use set notation, and so it's important to understand what the set notation would look like. We would use our set brackets, and we would say x such that x has to be greater than or equal to negative 8. Okay, um, if you're using interval notation, um, with interval notation, remember that you start at your lowest value. In this case, our lowest value is negative 8, and it is included, so we would use a hard bracket. If it was not included, if it was just greater than, we would use a parenthesis. And so this is all values from negative 8 to infinity. So again, really it just depends on the course that you're in. If you're in an Algebra 1 class, normally we write it like this. Um, if you start getting up into like a college algebra or a pre-calc class, you're going to use either set notation or interval notation. As always, thanks for watching. Please check out all my other video content. And if you have topics that you would like me to address or there's specific um, items that you need help on that you don't see, just please let me know.